Our podcast is a part of the World Podcast Network, now with over a thousand podcasts. Visit the World Podcast Network at worldpodcast.network to listen to podcasts in over 12 genres. Come vote our podcast episodes up and help us rise on the leaderboard. If you have a podcast of your own, you can join for free. Welcome to Reality Tea Times 2, the podcast where we discuss all the trash reality TV we love to hate. I am Tanika, and today we are going to be discussing The Bachelorette, the last, the last episode from last week. So I'm hoping I can get this out to you today, but well, I'm recording this on a Sunday. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> but before we head into the episode, let's talk some hot goss. So Jen, we're going, we're going to be talking about Jen here, Jen Tran. So she's been kind of going around you know, doing some podcasts and stuff like that. So we're going to kind of be talking about some of the things that have happened thus far. One of the things actually happening on this episode, but we're going to to talk about, about that. So on August 2nd, she was on an episode of Love to See It podcast. And there she opened up about contestant Sam M, who has been claiming that he got a quote unquote bad edit. Oh, did you, did you, fuck you. Anyways, She disagreed, noting that he needs to take responsibility for his behavior, saying, quote, listen, listen, (laughs) nobody can put words in your mouth. As much as a TV edit is an edit, no one can give you a villain edit in some way, which is what people are claiming. You have to own your words because no one's putting words in your mouth. You are the person that is saying those things. Preach. (laughs) She admitted that she was, quote, pissed off that Sam couldn't see the times he made her feel uncomfortable or contributed to issues on the show, saying, quote, sometimes you just got to take responsibility for the things that are coming out of your mouth. Thinking back to the pair's one-on-one date, which does happen in this episode, Jen shared that she wished she hadn't let Sam pressure her into jumping off of a sky tower in New Zealand when she insisted she wasn't up for the challenge, and we'll talk about it. Quote, that moment is very, very interesting for me to watch back and process and watch back with a lot of other eyes on the situation. And I was definitely annoyed in the moment that he made the decision for both of us to jump. We'll talk about it. In the episode, Sam could be seen giggling. We'll talk about it. As Tran cried and expressed her feeling, her fears, she said, that while she ultimately made her own decision to jump, she wished she had stood her ground and not given in so easily. She said, quote, thinking back to how I grew up, I wasn't particularly emotionally supported a lot growing up, especially with my father not really being in the picture. Adding that Sam's behavior reminded her of family members who were, quote, not the most empathetic. Sharing that she felt she definitely gave him way to, gave him, sorry, back up sharing that she felt she definitely forgave him way too quickly for that jen noted that it highlighted what she needs to work on within herself saying quote i've been so independent and taking care of myself that when somebody gives me an inch i take it for miles that's something that i'm currently just working on ultimately being able to see the way she was treated in that episode helped Jen understand her personal boundaries and needs, even if she didn't see it in the moment. She said, quote, that's not what I want in a partner. I don't want a partner that's just going to tell me to do something and not be there for me and not emotionally support me in that way. So watching it back was tough because it's also like, that's not the message that I want people to be watching. Like little girls who look up to me, that's not what you should be allowing your partner to do. Totally agree. Next thing that she did was go on another podcast, and this was The Vile Files. So Jen wasn't really quite into Aaron's pearl necklace on The Bachelorette. If you remember, he wore the pearl necklace, I believe, night one, I believe. So Jen opened up about, you know, kind of what icks, as we know, turnoffs 
kind of happened for her during this. This is kind of how it was brought up on the episode of File Files, but she was on on August 1st. She said, quote, like chewing with their mouth open kind of turns me off. And uh, this is what she told Nick and his wife, Natalie Joy, claiming she didn't have many other ex. So Nick kind of was like, so none of the men gave you an ex at all? And she would then go on to say, I feel bad if I say it. I'm just going to say pearl necklace was a very interesting choice. Referencing Aaron. Natalie, uh, who is probably a little closer to Jen's age than Nick. And she suggested that, quote, if there was a girl he babysat made it for him, okay, the necklace would have been more acceptable as Nick joked that perhaps the pearls were from Aaron's grandma. And she said, oh, that would have been so cute. Maybe I should have asked questions instead of judging. My bad. Nick then assumed the necklace was definitely not from Aaron's grandma. Of course not. Aaron, who's 29, previously defended his pearl necklace earlier this month after a fan asked for an explanation on it. And he said the answer is simple. I just kind of like him. So fans shared their opinions in the comment section saying, my bachelorette group loves it. One follower wrote to Aaron and they said, really, that's all that matters. And a social media user added, okay, but out of all of the dudes, you can pull them off. And Aaron apparently sweetly responded, best compliment ever. So again, I'm not necessarily surprised with the choice for him to wear a pearl necklace. I think when you have artists today, like Harry Styles, who've kind of pushed, you know, the men wearing pearls, I'm not, as for me, it's, for me, I don't particularly, I'm with kind of Jen. I don't really care what the reason is. I am also going to be turned off because that's just me, but I'm also older. I'm of a different generation that I just didn't really say that a lot when I was growing up that you kind of do now. So, so yeah, that's, that's me, but it's definitely probably more of an acceptable thing to do for men nowadays than before. So I'm not surprised that he wore a pearl necklace. So, you know, and he did, he did, he look good doing it. So whatever. So that's that. I didn't know he was 29. I don't know why I thought he was younger. Anyways, but that's basically it for that. The only other thing that I want to do before we hop into the episode is, as I always mention on the podcast, especially in the outro, that I will read your five or four at five star readings. And I have a five star rating on Apple Podcasts, and I'm so excited. And I am going to read it. I'm going to leave you anonymous, but you know who you are. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for this five star rating, this lovely review alongside it. And I'm going to rate it here. So, five stars, great time listening. I enjoy the show and love all of the content of so many great shows she covers. I even started watching Love in Translation to see what she had to say about it. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you so much. Love in Translation was a very interesting show to cover, and it was a lot of fun kind of covering this very new show. I hope I can encourage, you know, people to watch We Have Forbidden Love now as a newer show as well. So thank you so much. I will post this on socials as well, because again, this is such a big deal for me. The very first five star rating and it's going to help so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Again, you know who you are. And I will post this again. I will leave your name anonymous though on the post. But again, thank you so, so, so much for this amazing five star rating. But yeah, let's get into the reason that we are here. Bachelorette season 21 episode four, week three. So we are in Auckland, New Zealand. And there we kind of see them kind of like drinks and they look really refreshing that they're drinking the guys. And here we fucking go with the obsession with Devin for fucking Sam M. Like, come on, my guy. But anyways, meanwhile, we have Jen and she's with Jesse. And we kind of are kind of told, because Jesse's like, you want a fun fact? I'll give you a fun fact. Fun fact is, do you want to know why you don't really eat on the show anymore? This guy, me looking at him, I'm the one. Because apparently he'd eat like a pig while having like heartfelt conversations with these women. He's like, yeah, me, I'm the one. Mm-hmm. So 
I completely forgot about this. I mean, I definitely remember seeing Jesse's season, but it was a long time ago. Sorry, Jesse. But anyways, so then Jen goes over to show us the guys and we do have a one-on-one date. And my one-on-one date is Sam M as discussed earlier in the episode. So, ugh, <laughs> my words that I wrote was ugh. Anyway, the guys head over to the hotel. The hotel looks really great. So we're going to go back over to the date. They're going to the top of that fucking tall ass tower, which is the sky tower as discussed. But they're going to be just kind of lounging, kind of sitting in like, I guess it was like a restaurant. And they're just checking out the view from there. Safe. No, nothing else, you know? And as they're kind of there talking, we basically see this guy just, I don't know, fall onto his death. No, he was bunny jumping. Oh, also, this restaurant gives us 360 views of Auckland. That's quite cool. So yeah, this yeah, this person just kind of just drops to his death. And I'm like, okay, great. And then, so planned, the waiter comes on over and he's like, I don't know if y'all noticed. You mean the guy falling to his death? Yeah, sir, I noticed. There are these people who, who you know, jump. You don't have to jump if you want to. You can also just do like the skywalk. So it's very similar for people who live here in, in Ontario, near Toronto. Same thing with the CN Tower. We have 360 views of Toronto in the restaurant. And then you could also do the Skywalk, which I've never done. No, thank you. I don't know if they jump off the CN Tower at all. I've never seen people jump off the CN Tower, but maybe they do. I just don't remember. But they definitely have a skywalk. But you can just do that if you want to. No thanks. But you can do it. And that's what this waiter is basically telling them. You can do that. You know, you don't have to jump or anything. So Jen's like, I don't know about jumping, but I'll walk. You know, walking sounds great. I'll, I'll, do, I'll do that. Like she has no intentions of jump jumping. But Sam's like, let's just jump. Let's just do it. What? She literally like just said... Or, you know, I can't remember if the order was he said, let's jump before she said anything. She might have said that in in the moment, but you don't even think to look over at her and ask, what would you want to do? What do you like to do? Well, you know, do you want to jump? Do you want to do the walk? Like, it's up to you. What do you want to do? He just is like, let's jump. I'm starting to not be surprised that you're single, my guy. Because you seem very fucking selfish. So, especially like, I don't know if the, if he's aware of her fear of heights, but you still ask whether she's, a, it doesn't matter if she's afraid of heights or not, you still ask the fuck. Anyway, he's like, you know, you don't want to look back at this like 50 years from now. He loved 50 years. What the fuck? You don't want to look back 50 years from now and have regrets. You know what, my guy? I won't have any regrets looking back 50 years from now. You want to know why? Because I'll be alive. You know what I mean? So he says, you know, I'll push you. He literally says to her, I'll push you. I don't, spoiler alert, get how this guy got a rose at the end of the night. I really don't. And I think she's also questioning how he got a rose at the end of the night now too. Hindsight's 2020. But I'm just like, what? fuck i would have i would have pushed him off the building and said you're not getting a rose tonight you know what i mean like no absolutely see this is how i can never be on the show because i don't take that shit are you kidding anyway but she's literally scared like you can tell she's shaking at the idea of doing this and like for her easing herself into this is doing the skywalk and you want to say Let's just jump. I'll push you. Fucking. Ugh. And it's not about her. He doesn't give a shit about her fear in any of this. It's about getting his adrenaline going because he's an adrenaline junkie. That is not going to work with every woman that you're with. And if that's the case, then maybe she's not the one for you. You know what I mean? I know I'm going to see this fucking guy in Bachelor of Paradise and then I'm gonna fucking like him. Anyway, let's get on with it. Yeah, he's like, it's all about the memories. Fuck you and your memories. So he wants her to be, you know, used to being uncomfortable. Again, what the fuck? Like, 
you, I have never, ever been told by my boyfriend, I want you to be used to feeling uncomfortable. I think that is like the last thing he would ever say to me. And then yet you have this fucking guy literally being like, I want you to be used to feeling uncomfortable. You think you want her to feel comfortable. Anyway, she says, I want to have his support or I will not jump. Girl, you ain't getting his support. Okay. He kind of says nothing while she's freaking out. And y'all, we're going to be jumping from 630 feet. Okay. I think the fuck not yet again. Anyways, again, she's freaking out. She needs a little bit of support in this moment. And he's just standing there saying nothing. I'm like, do you want to say something? No? Cool, cool, cool. But Shannon's like, I'll do it. Or so Sam, sorry, Sam, she said, I guess Sam says, like, I'll do it you know, and she can watch. Because basically, this lady has them kind of like leaning and he's like leaning over to the side and he says, I think you should come over here and give me a kiss. What the fuck? She doesn't want to. I would literally be like, good for you. Good for you. I First of all, number one, I wouldn't even be there. Number two, good for you. You want a kiss? You come to me. I ain't coming to you. Fuck you think this shit is? Like, uh, no. No. <laughs> so, like, she's visibly upset by this whole thing. Like, she, she's definitely, she, like, her reaction in this moment is so much worse than when she did the, the jumping out of the plane with Marcus. But again, not every guy is going to be Marcus. Okay, Marcus in this situation would have never put her in this situation, ever, 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 ever. You know, and oh, I mean, I'm sure she feels good about doing it, but again, if she, the difference, we'll, we'll get to it. But uh, it was she definitely looks like she's on the brink of a panic attack, and he just doesn't either see it or care. I don't know. But this is where, yes, we see him literally giggling at her fear. Again, my guy, this is why you're single. <laughs> like, you don't giggle at someone's fear, at someone's pain. Like, uh, this is kind of goes to show me he would be the kind of person that, you know, if they were to have kids together and she is, you know, having postpartum or whatever, like, she, she'd be, she would be having PPD, he would laugh at her. He would tell her, oh, get over it. You know, this is, this is, this is the guy that would tell you, get over it. You'll, you, you know, you should be happy. We have a kid or whatever the fuck. But it's not about that. It's not about not being happy that you are a parent and you have a kid, but your hormones are literally saying, fuck you, I'm out. And you're not understanding that, you know? And this is what he's showing you. If in this moment he can't support you, then how can you expect him to support you in other moments? Anyway, again, don't understand how this guy got a rose at the end of the night. Then he does, and maybe this is maybe how he got the rose at the end of the night. He does eventually go to her and says, hey, you know what? You don't want to do it. Then don't do it. This is what you should have told her. I don't know, a half an hour ago. But now he finally sees that she's in fear. But then the lady is like, listen, you did it. It's great. But there is only one good way to get down from here. Bitch. I'm going to go back in the way I came out of this, came out to this fucking shit in the first place. You think I'm going down the damn building? You must be mad. No way. I would literally look at her and say, I know the door opens, bitch. <laughs> no, but there's only one good way to come. Anyways, so <laughs> then she jumps. <laughs> she jumps off the building. She's the first person who does it. And I'm just like, the fuck? But she did it. It's great. Anyways, and she's like, did I have fun? Yes, I did. Will I do it again? Absolutely fucking not. <laughs> And that's the difference. The difference with this is like, 
with the plane. She's like, can we do it again? And here she's like, the fuck I think not. <laughs> like, there she's, she's never doing it again. So let's go over to the guys real quick. We got a date card. And on this date card, we have Spencer, Marcus, Grant, John M., Austin, Jonathan, Dylan, Thomas, Jeremy, and Sam N. And the card reads, let's give love a try. And if we, if you keep them up, the only other person who was not mentioned on that card was Devin, which means that Devin is going to be having the other one-on-one -on -one date. Didn't know we were having another one-on-one -on -one date. I missed that. But anyways, we're having two-on-one, two-one-on-ones and one group dates. So that's where we're at. So great. Back add to this one-on-one -on -one date that I could care less about. Um, so I th think, I can't remember who asked this question, but someone asked the question of like, what do you need in a relationship? And the other person responds with, it's, it needs to be wild and intimate and passionate. Yes, you need all those things, but you also need stability. <laughs> and uh, support and you know you need those things as well and I think it was definitely him he is the one that answered that and that's why I said like that's the problem it's all surface you need yes to have all those things in a relationship but the things that keep the relationship going the things that build the foundation he doesn't even mention here and I just anyway the person who constantly chooses you though he does say that and she talks to him about her parents divorce how the relationship was a little toxic as well didn't have the best example and he says that i felt that i or sorry i think he someone says i think he says i felt that i wanted to that i wasn't worth or she says it sorry guys my handwriting he knows already yeah she says that i felt like i wasn't ready or deserving of love. And he does tell her here what I did think was very sweet. I still don't like him though. Was he says, You are very worthy and and you're very deserving. And she said, you know, the guys that she was with before, they were definitely fucking trolls and toxic and that. So if you remember from his video package, we did hear that Sam M was previously engaged. So he does talk about that. He talks about being engaged. And he says the second that I um got engaged, it went to shit. He's like, I knew something was wrong. You know, I, you know, you like know, I, I think pride or prayed, whatever, until she basically told him that there was someone else. Damn. This conversation with him kind of made me realize, or she said, I think she says that this conversation with him made him realize that my fears were real with that he gets the rose which i still don't fucking understand but nonetheless he gets the rose and then the tower lights up to look like a red like a, like a rose the tip is red the bottom part is green resembling a rose so there you go that's that with the group date oh sorry the one-on-one -on -one date with sam let's go to the group date a uh, we're going to be playing some rugby we then kind of started off though with like this and then they call it like a haka, like rit rit ritual, um, that kind of happened. So that was pretty cool. It's a ceremonial dance, that's what it was. And it's actually the Mari, which I think we see them again. But yeah, there's the culture to, uh, it displays pride, strength, and unity. So we start with spring training. And Jen only wants to have friendly tackling that's it. And she's like, you know, but someone could also dog on me too if they want to. Okay, Jen, calm down, girl. But anyway, then, then Sam and kind of, this is kind of where the game started. He, he goes over and he just fucking rams right into, into, uh, I think Marcus. And Marcus is like, what the fuck, man? And Sam N says, screw the group. Screw the guys. Mainly, he says, who the group? I am the group. Oh, fuck you, say? <laughs> I am the group? Yeah, no. You're here and barely on the radar. Let's continue. Back at the, at the hotel, though, very quickly, this, this, was, this was fucking great. You realize, oh shit, Sam, M, and Devin have to be left alone with each other. There's no buffer, Jesus. And Sam is like, 
What is your deal? I'm like, hi, what? This is going to even be better because the for this guy, they literally, well, that's what he's like, yeah, what's your deal? And he's like, I don't got one. This is what Devin says. Like, I don't got a deal. And Sam M says, like, I don't care about you. I don't respect you. Blah, blah, blah. Same thing. You know, your name doesn't come out of my mouth, bruh. Or your, I'm sorry, your name doesn't come out of my mouth. And I wrote, bruh, you literally start talking to him first. And you want to be like, your name doesn't come out of my mouth? Yes, it does. This is when they were, should have rolled the tape the amount of times that Sam M has put Devin's mouth, um, name in his mouth. Are you fucking kidding me? Your name is in my mouth, though. What the fuck? <sighs> Anyways, back at rugby. <laughs> These game starts right now, and we have to... Something about whatever. Get on the, the ball to the whatever. Anyways, John, my god, is just... just, just sprinting he's just sprinting to get and he's getting goals and stuff it's great and the guys are tackling hard okay sam m is also sorry n is fucking unhinged he's on fucking hinged okay he might be on the next episode of snapped because he's unhinged what the fuck is happening and he is just tackling everyone and again if you see this guy for those maybe who don't watch the episode he's not that big or anything okay but he's just tackling everyone and it, he has like a jersey on they all have jerseys on but he has a jersey on that has in the back of it that says jen's husband the fuck you say see here's the problem with with i've and i've been here with guys who've never been in relationships before and never been in love before, when they enter into a relationship, they're so desperate to feel that, that they, 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 they go like this, <laughs> they end up like this, like, like Sam N, and it's, it's smothering, it's very smothering, and I'm seeing all traits of that, and it's not that he's in love with her, he's not, there's no fucking way, but it's like, he's so desperate to feel something that he's gonna, like, force it yeah it's, it's not it's not gonna turn out the way he wants it to i'm not spoiling anything but it's not necessarily gonna turn out the way you want it to when you're kind of forcing something to happen so then the blue team wins 10 to 5 and sam n is the one on that team and now sam has a target on his back because he's been a lot and the target gets worse trust me so now it's the after party and Sam N is just rubbing people the wrong way. He's like, I'm gonna talk to her first because like I'm the top guy here. Fuck you say. Anyway, they go to sit and Sam okay. So when Sam goes to sit on the couch, he has the trophy, they have a trophy, his trophy. He puts the trophy on the cushion beside him. And this basically makes Marcus not be able to have somewhere to sit. And when Marcus asked him to move the trophy so he can sit, or I think maybe the other guys also asked him to move it so Marcus could sit, he says, and I quote, no, I'm not moving it. The trophy deserves to seat more than you do. What the fuck? He basically had to make Marcus stand up and said, here's what I'm going to say. And I am going to, I would have used the card myself personally, but I know you're not supposed to be prideful. So I get that. You're having this person who served his fucking country nearly died in the process, stand up because you're so fucking, I don't even know right now about this fucking rugby game. Come all the way to your parents will be proud really would. What the fuck is wrong with this guy? Oh, because he won a game? <laughs> so stupid. Then Jen comes in, and he, as mentioned, Sam pulls her immediately, and he tells her that, you know, his focus is on her, which obviously it should be, and the he brings, like, this, this gift for her, which is a jersey, and on the back of the jersey, it reads Sam's wife or something like that. And, um, yeah, he's just kind of on a different, different place right now. But that seems to go fairly well. And then, you know, her and Jonathan end up playing lacrosse because they both 
play the cross in high school. So they kind of connected with that, which I thought was really cute. Susan so can have a lot of, a lot of fun with him in that moment. Sam then walks in the room with the other guys and they're all just like, listen, my guy, they're like, when you win something, you should win with grace. You know, they're trying to, you know, speak to him on a level that's not rude or anything. And he basically just tries to defend himself, which, I mean, I'm sorry, but there's nothing for you to defend, right? You are being a little bit of an asshole and you need to own it. For, for the first time, I'm on the guy's side. For the first time, I'm on Thomas's side. <laughs> Who knew? And Sam was completely out of line and he won't even apologize. He doesn't care. He He's kind of like, you know, I'm, not gonna, I'm here for her. You're more focused. Like he's basically using the words that Devin used on Thomas as well on all the guys here. And I'm just like, no, no, no. Devin actually had something to say. He actually was able to use that and not come across like an asshole. You're saying it in this moment and are coming across like an asshole because they are literally saying to you, you need to ease the fuck up because you're so in your own fucking head about this that you're not even allowing all the guys to fucking sit down on the couch. The trophy can go on the table or on the floor. Like, Jesus. Anyway, he basically gets up and he says he doesn't give a shit. I'm not here for a bromance. No one said anything about you being here for a bromance, but you can respect the other guys. That's the least you can do. And he's like, I'm cool and collected. So yeah, whatever. Jen checks on Marcus with her, her stethoscope. She's brought it with her because he got hurt during the game, which I, I kind of missed, but he, he did get hurt during the game. And Sam tells the guys that I already believe that the group, the group date Rose is mine. Okay. That's great. And he walks out and Thomas comes to talk to him and Sam was like, you know, why are you pulling me? Blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know, he, he, okay. <laughs> He's like, you know, I want to, I, I won't hear it or whatever the fuck it is. Then leave. And he, as he's leaving, this was fucking weird. As he's leaving, he tells Thomas, oh, by the way, you look good on you. What the fuck? And Thomas is also like, what, what the fuck? Like, you're literally like, bye, bye, by the way, you looks good on you. What the fuck? This guy's, like I said, unhinged. Then while Thomas is with Jen, Sam is on a mission. Of course he is. And he goes over to them and he interrupts them. And he's like, can I have a moment with you? He says to Jen. And Thomas says, quick, like, give me five minutes. He's like, no, my guy, like, now. And Jen lets him. And I kind of was like, okay, wait, like, I mean, give Thomas a chance because Thomas is always being interrupted. But I think it kind of worked out for the best because Sam tells her, listen, I want to talk this or take this to the next level with you. So can I kiss you? Because he hasn't kissed her yet. Which again, it's like, okay, listen, if you have to ask for a kiss, then you are most likely not going to get one. You shouldn't have to necessarily ask for a kiss. Like, obviously, consent. But you can kind of tell by a person's body language that they want to kiss you. And she hasn't given you that before. So what makes you think you're going to get that now? So, yeah. So she's like, okay, let, let, let me be honest. And you're like, oh, shit. She's like, yeah, let me be honest. I just don't see us going, like, going to get to the place like you want us to get to. She's like, I, I don't think... I'm, I'm the right person. So I'm gonna need to walk you out. Bye. It's time for you to leave. And I thought this was perfect. I thought this was the best way to just knock him down a few pegs because this guy really thought he stood a fucking chance. You didn't. From the moment you got there, my guy, you can kind of tell kind of who she's leaning towards and who she wasn't. And it wasn't going to be you. I'm sorry. And the fact that you thought that it would be, it's just like, you can't be serious. So in the car, he says, I feel confused. Well, it's like, I feel like a fool. Well, if the shoe fits. And that's kind of basically that. Oh, no, sorry. He's like, 
<laughs> before we finish up with him, he's like, I wore a denim jacket. What does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Not a damn thing. Anyway, so Jen tells the guys I sent Sam and home. So we only got one Sam left. Let's get him out too. <laughs> so yeah, she had to send him home. She does apologize to Thomas for the time being cut short. So I did appreciate her doing that. And then she gives the group date rose to Marcus. So that's basically how that goes. But we're going to take a break here. And when we come back, we will jump in with the one-on-one -on -one date with Devin. And I am back. So we're jumping in with the one-on-one -on -one date with Devin. And we are going to be learning about the Mari culture. And we do this welcome celebration, which is really cool to look at and see, you know, you know, and Devin talks about kind of when they get into this room and they're kind of going to be talking about kind of like where they come from, where they are kind of going, kind of just basically just talking about who they are. And it's kind of here that Devin talks about kind of where he comes from. He says that his dad immigrated from Mexico. He talks about his mom briefly as well, kind of, you know, being important to him. And Jen talks about being Vietnamese, obviously, with her family, also being Buddhist and wanting to kind of bring that into, you know, when she becomes a mom and uh, into with her, with her kids and her marriage. So yeah, it wasn't a whole lot really to kind of talk about because they really are going to elaborate on all of those things in the night portion of, of the date, which is kind of where we're headed right now. So we're at the night portion and he opens up about being in, you know, kind of being raised in a type of environment as a kid. And he says like his parents were never together. It was kind of a one time situation, which we all do, but unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, you know, I'm sure she's grateful for her son and she loves him dearly, but obviously at the time that resulted in a pregnancy, him being the, the child and his dad was really not really around. And he said that, you know, his mom moved around a lot and his mom worked two jobs, went back to school eventually because she did have a dropout when she was pregnant with Devin. And she had to raise two kids. She does have another uh, another son. And he says that I wasn't, you know, a bad kid necessarily, but he would definitely idolize his father in a way that maybe he didn't deserve to be idolized. Because when you're a kid, like you don't understand. And I'm gonna elaborate more on that. But his dad was never there. He would actually say that he wished he could live with his father. So here they're going to say, as a as a child who, like my dad wasn't absent necessarily, but he wasn't always around either as much as obviously my mom. My mom raised me. But when you are a child who's only being raised by one parent, you want your that other parent around and you don't understand why they're not around and you do start idolizing the idea of what you think your parent is or what you want them to be even though they may not be that he he really spoke to my heart in that moment because i wouldn't necessarily say i idolized my father but i guess i would say that being with my dad was just a different feel than it was with my mom but with my mom, I was definitely very close with her as a child. And I guess I was also saying that obviously you have your moments, but it's, it's, it's just the idea. You're, you're analyzing the idea when you become older and you realize, oh shit, like that parent isn't what I thought they were. It's, it's heartbreaking. So yeah, he definitely spoke to my heart in that moment when he talked about that, but he says today his mom is his is his mountain, which was something that was mentioned during the, the Amari part of the date where they kind of kind of said, you know, what's your mountain? You know, and that's, you know, so that's kind of what he brought that from. So yeah, he says that she's his mountain and Jen can relate with, with this, obviously with her father. 
not wanting to be a father or a husband. I just, it's amazing that someone can just choose to not be a husband. You can choose to not be a husband, but you don't get to choose to not be a father. You are a father and you don't get to walk away from that. But this fucker decided he wanted to walk away from it. I feel for her. And you ask her, do you have a relationship with him or do you want one? And she says, I remember two good memories with my father, but after the divorce, he kind of just didn't want to be a father. And she had to kind of set the boundary and with him, because, you know, you can't just come in and out of someone's life like that. And kind of with that, he never talked to her again. And, you know, I really do hope, if anything, he watches. I hope he watches this, if anything, and realize the pain that he's put his children through, not just Jen, but his children through. Um, not that it's going to make it necessarily better or doesn't mean you necessarily get a pass back into someone's life, but I hope he just gets it, you know? But, uh, based on what she's describing, I don't think he even cares. And that's the sad part about it. And she seems, she said that that seemed to kind of shape how she went about relationships because she's basically searching for men to fill that void, to fill that hole. And I mean, sometimes we'll make kind of jokes of, oh, she has daddy issues or not necessarily just talking about Jen, but just generally speaking. It's not about daddy issues. Yes, we have daddy issues. I would probably say I have the same, um, different aspects of that, but it definitely can probably look at the guys and say, oh, well, and it's not so much about that, but you're trying to fill this void of a person who either A, isn't there, or B, chooses not to be there. And that's what happens. And then you're going towards men who are toxic, who don't deserve your time. And it's sad. So she says she had to break the cycle and there seems to be a lot of similarities between the two of them. And he tells her that I came into disliking you a lot. And now I'm falling, like I'm falling for you. And I'm not afraid to, to say that. And then he, you know, she gives him the rose. And then we just kind of hear this opera singer in the background, which is, he's very good actually. But yeah, you know, after this date and kind of seeing Devin kind of just with her alone, no one else. Y'all, I kind of ship them. I kind of ship them. I could see him being at the end of this. And you know what? I think it'll be great for them, honestly. So we'll, we'll see. So after that date though, usually we're going to head into the cocktail hour, right? Not yet. So we see Jen kind of just walking on the boardwalk, reflecting. She's obviously filming with her producers. And we see Jesse kind of back at the hotel, Wabi telling us, guess what guys? So there's this guy from her past that has been, you know, trying to get in touch with her. He wants to talk to her and he's currently on the way to the hotel right now. He's completely paid for this flight out of his own pocket to get there, which is nuts. We see the car pulling up and we're just like, who the fuck are you, my guy? Well, we, we don't know him, but we don't even get his name at first, but his name is Matthew. Thank you very much, Jen, for saying his fucking name. But um, they dated for about three years. Oh, sorry. They dated for three to four months, three years ago. And it kind of appears that maybe they were a little bit off and on through through things, but not sure. But he says he doesn't want to let her go. And Jesse tells him, listen, we have very limited limited time here, Okay. We have a cocktail hour coming up. We have a rose ceremony tonight. You know, she's obviously building connections with these men. Maybe some of them she shouldn't be, but she's connecting with these men. You don't have a lot of time, my guy. So I think you need to go down to the boardwalk where she currently is right now and have a conversation with her. These guys over here will lead you to her. So that's what he's going to do. And the thing that was kind of great with the editing of this is we got kind of things like these split screens. We have the split screen with Jesse and Matthew. We have the split screen with, with Jen just you know, just in her, she isn't, she's just, you know, she's fine. She's happy. She's, you know, content with how things are going. And then you have the other screen with the guys getting ready for the cocktail party. It's, it was, yeah, good editing. We see he's on the way and her back is to him. She 
doesn't see him coming. But then I guess maybe she, I don't know, maybe the producers or whatever, the camera guys are just kind of looking in the direction of him. And she turns around and she sees him and she's like, what? She's like, I can't. She's like, how are you here right now? Well, he paid on his own dime. But anyways, we hear speak about this Columbia trip. So I guess a friend of theirs, a mutual friend of theirs was getting married in Colombia. And I guess she was also supposed to be going, obviously, but I guess with her becoming the Bachelorette. And not only that, but if we remember, technically the Bachelorette was supposed to be Maria. So when Maria turned it down and went over with Jen, so clearly plans were being made, obviously, because she's going my life, it's normal. So she wasn't able to go to the Columbia trip. So Matthew was going to be going. But I guess they were, going to, they were supposed to go together. I don't know. But he is like, I couldn't, I couldn't go to Columbia without you. What the fuck? So yeah, so then we get his name is Matthew. And again, thank you, John. And he says that he loves her and he will probably always love her, which is interesting here because I mean, if you recall, previously to him actually starting to talk to her, he says, we have love for each other. We'll always have love for each other. When he says that, I love you, she takes it as a shock. Like she's never heard him say this to her before. So what? I'm just confused again. But Jen says, you know, he's not the toxic ex. He's a different ex. And he says that they reconnected a few months ago as for, she says, sorry, they reconnected as, as a few months ago as friends only, or so she fucking thought. And he doesn't necessarily deny that, but I guess what he's saying is we've connected, you know, we, we tell each other everything. So he took that as, you know, I know so much about you. We're like best friends or whatever. And he maybe is taking that stuff further than, than what she maybe expected. I don't know. Maybe it feels like maybe, yeah, they dated, but maybe she's more friend zoned him now. I don't know. But what she does kind of say to him is, so why couldn't you have told me this before I left? Like, why are you doing this on camera? It's a very good question to ask. And he's like, but he's a say. Well, I did. Can't tell you. Maybe he's just isn't as grand as this is. And he tells her, I love you. And again, she seems very shocked by this. And he says he would like to join her on her journey. And she's like, so you want to come on here, date me and how many other guys there is? He's like, well, I prefer just you, but okay. <laughs> and we just kind of see her say, okay, give me a second. And she kind of walks away to think about it. But I think she's at least going to let him come to the cocktail party. Don't know how it's going to turn out past that. But I think this is definitely going to potentially backfire on her when it comes to the guys but i guess we'll see how that turns out but that is it for the episode as promised i am going to put a post out there on twitter maybe reddit as well to kind of say you know here's who i think the top four is going to be i don't think that's really changed for me um since i was the last episode and see what y'all think i'm curious to know what everyone else thinks who you think the next Bachelor, sorry, not the next Bachelor, sorry, who you think her top four is going to be. But yeah, with that, that is it for this, for this episode. So if you like what you heard, please rate, review the podcast on either Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Also, don't forget that uh, you can also share us with everyone in your life if you really love us. And I do want to read those reviews. I'm definitely getting five star ratings, but I want to read those reviews. So send me those reviews and I will read those four and five star reviews on the podcast. Also, we're on every one of your favorite podcast apps, every one of them, including you can find us on YouTube at Reality Tea Times 2. If you want to connect with us, you can do so by going to either Facebook or Instagram at Reality Tea Times 2. You can also find us on Twitter, TikTok, Reddit, at Reality Tea Times 2 Pod. We also have our email, which is at Reality Tea Times 2 at Hallmail.com. Definitely want to hear from you guys. And we also have our new website where you can listen to 
all of these episodes. You can review the podcast on there as well. You can connect with me in any way, all the stuff. It's all there. And you can find me there at www.reality t times two, all spelled out, um, dot podpage.io. It's there. And don't forget, I also have my other podcast with my friend Mikkel, Next Week Podcast, where we talk about all kinds of different topics. Um, but you can find us on any of your favorite podcast apps over there as well. Or you can also go to YouTube um, and you can go to Next Take Podcast, as well as our website, which is solo.to forward slash Next Take Podcast. Um, so yeah, there's with that. And that's basically that. And again, don't forget, if all of this information is overwhelming, we do have all of the links, everything in our show notes. But that is it for now, guys. Thanks. Bye.